In this video, I'd like to talk a little bit about using uh, uh, Octave in MATLAB for some of its intended features to work with uh, matrices and to work with uh, vectors. And so um, I've just created a little, little, uh, yeah, a little script here that in which we're going to do a few things. So first thing I want to mention is that uh, one of the most frustrating things when you're working in MATLAB and Octave is uh, the output will always print to the screen. Uh, so if I, for example, just write this script and all it has in it. By the way, these are comments. If you ever want to create a comment, comments are extremely handy to remind you of what you're doing there and also to allow your reader to see what you're doing there. So you start a comment with a uh, uh, hashtag and or pound sign as I like to call it and then you can type out your comment. Now that comment will run onto the next line if you change the size of the window. Uh, so you can see that right now it's 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 set to wrap. You can change the wrapping and you can just have it uh, remain on that one line. But if you want to kind of, you know, uh, create additional lines, you can do that as well. So meaning that uh, you can separate two comments by basically, you know, if I want to create a co another comment on this line, then I can say hello. And uh, if I don't put that there, see, now it's trying to treat it as code. As you can see, it doesn't turn green. In any case, if I were to run this right now, uh, this is actually going to output the value of x. And a lot of times you don't really want that. A lot of times you just want to define x uh, to be the value 2. So in order to do that, but to avoid it printing to the screen, if you put a semicolon at the end of the line, the only difference is it still runs the function and you can still see here x is, x is equal to 2. I can change x to 5 and save and run again. And it didn't output anything to the screen, it just told me that it was running the code. And if I look at x again, now it's equal to 5. So that uh, is a way to suppress output. Um, now what I want to do next is is I want to uh, talk a little bit about vectors. So a vector is basically just a collection of, of, of elements. In this case, for the most part, we're going to deal with uh, a vector or a list, if you prefer, uh, is just ba basically going to be a set of numbers. And the reason we need this is because if we're going to define things numerically, we want to be able to specify uh, what numbers we want. So maybe what we want is we want these four uh, represent input values for x. Okay, so what I would do to create a vector is I would say x equals, and I want x to equal the full list of these four numbers. So I'm going to put a set of double brackets, okay, and that's going to indicate that you're creating a list. Again, it's technically called a list as a data structure, but we often call it vectors in mathematics. Okay, now I'm just going to copy in, in these in here and paste them. You could either separate them by a comma or just leave a space in there. So if I save this and run it, notice that it just outputs those four values. It doesn't even put the commas in there. Uh, you can omit the commas and just leave a space between these guys and save it and run it, and it's going to do the exact same thing. Uh, commas may help you kind of disambiguate a little bit more. Uh, you can use as many spaces as you want. You can even have commas and spaces like that just to help you see the, the number breaks. It's going to produce the same thing. Now the advantage of this is that now I have this, this structure called X and notice that it's it's now a one by four. It's called a mate it calls it a matrix really. So MATLAB uses matrices. So it's a matrix that contains those four elements. Now often what I want to do is I want to access those elements later on. So if I want to, for example, access the third element inside of there, what I would type in is X parenthesis three close parenthesis. And so what that's asking for, and let me suppress this output because I don't want it to keep printing that vector. I just want to see what the third element is. So if I save and run that, notice that it tells me answer equals 13. And so what that means is that the third element, one, two, three, the third element inside of that list is 13. If I change that to X4, then that's going to return the fourth element. So you can think about four as the input, that's the index. And uh, the fourth index leads to an output of three. So if now I run it again, I should get answer equals three. In fact, I can even put it up f printf statement in here and say um, the value of x is, and then um, let's see. Now I can say percentage zero point zero f, and I just want to print that value. Close that. Uh, put a comma in there. Save it. Run it. And, oh no, I've got a syntax error here somewhere. Let's figure out what I did wrong. And it looks like I just forgot uh, the parenthesis there. So save this, run it again. And it says the value of x is 3. Right? If I change this to x5, uh, I'm going to get an error. And it says error x5 out of bound 4. Well, this is telling me that basically there is no fifth element inside of the vector called x because we're out of bound at index 4, meaning that after index 4, there's nothing left. So I could put a fifth element in here and I could say that's negative 12 and save that and run it. And now it says the value of x is negative 12. It doesn't throw that error anymore because I've added a fifth element in there. 
Okay, so that's one thing that you can do. Now, the other advantage that this gives is I can uh, take a function of these values. So maybe what I want is I want the uh, square of all of these values. So I can define a new vector called y, and I want basically the square of all these values, right? So if I just type in y equals x caret 2, that seems to work, right? That makes sense. That's what I want to do. I'm going to square the values of x. And I run that, and it says, uh-oh, x, x to the a, a must be a square matrix. Oh, boy, giving me all kinds of weird stuff. Well, really, the issue here is that you can't square uh, a matrix. You want to square the elements of the matrix. So to do that, you do uh, this dot operator, x dot caret 2. And the, the thing that this means, what that means right there, is take the elements of this vector called x and square them. So if I save this and I run that, now notice that it gives me the square of those elements. So 8 squared is 64, 12 squared is 144, 169, 9, and then negative 12 squared is 144. OK, so I'm still printing a bunch of stuff to the screen here. Um, so, but, but in any case, I've created a new vector. And this is going to come in handy because maybe what I want to do is I want to plot some ordered pairs. I want to plot the x values versus the, squ the, the square of the x values. Um, so if I actually now type in this simple function called plot, and let me suppress this out because I don't actually want to see the elements of that vector. I want to see the elements of that vector in a plot. So plot is a function, okay, and it accepts two inputs. Uh, it accepts a list of x values and a list of y values. Now, these could be called P and W. It doesn't really matter. It's just we're conventionally used to sticking with X and Y. So if I save this and I run it, um, now it actually produces a graph. Okay, And this graph uh, is actually those values. Now it looks kind of funky because the way the graphing utility works is usually these elements are, these elements are ordered, so it's just connecting the dots. So the point, um, let's see, X is um, negative 12 is back here, and negative 12 goes with an output of 144. So you see it, it kind of connects the dots versus creating the type of smooth uh, graph that we want. Now I can do different things. I can actually now do what are called optional features, and I can say, okay, if I put in single quotes R, what that's going to do is that just changes the, the color. It changed it from the default of blue to the default of red. I can actually even type in the word red, and um, that uh, did not appear to work. Let's see, why didn't that work? Okay, well, in any case, I can change it to G for, uh, I think it might be green or gray. Uh, that's green. I can change it to Y for yellow. Uh, there are other ways to change colors, but we're not going to get into that. You can actually go into the documentation. If you Google plot MATLAB, it'll give you all the optional features uh, inside of there. Also, if you do something like this, um, or sorry, if I put an O in there, it's actually going to create circles for the ordered pairs. And so maybe if I want a scatter plot, I can do that. Or maybe I can do a dot in there. And let's see if that works. So you can kind of tinker around. So this is more of like the traditional type of scatter plot we're used to using. Okay, so that's how you would create a plot. Now we'll, we'll talk down here about how you actually do labels and stuff for that. So let me suppress some of these outputs. Um, suppress this output here. Okay, so the, notice the plot still appears, and notice that the print statement still appears. The reason those appear is because I'm actually asking it to do something and, and print it off to the screen. So I can actually comment these out temporarily, and so what that will do is uh, it just will simply, you know, now we don't have any output at all because I've suppressed these two lines and I've commented out these, so it's treating these as if it's basically says ignore this line and ignore this line here. The next thing we want to be able to do is define symbols. Okay, so a symbol and a variable are two different things. A variable is like me taking x equals 3. Now, even though x can change values, at any given moment, x is a single value. And that's what we mean by variable in programming languages. If I want x to be a symbol where it can take on any number of values uh, and it can be evaluated for different values, I'm going to do uh, I'm going to run this function called sims, okay? Sims, what that does is that defines basically anything that is about to follow is going to be defined as a symbolic variable. So I want to create two symbols. I want to call them x and y, okay? So I'm basically going to use some spaces here to do that. I'm going to run this, okay? And um, nothing happened right now because I think I've already some, at some point created some symbolic, but you might see uh, an operation. Well, here, let me do this. Let me do a clear and see if now you can see the uh, code executing. Okay, so uh, back here, now you see two variables, and if you hover over them, they have this little dollar sign, and that means that they're now symbols. So if I do things like um, 
x plus x, notice that it's now treating x as a symbol. It says that uh, x plus x is 2x. If I had to find x to equal 7, then x plus x would have output 14. But now it's working with symbols and it's saying, oh, okay, you want me to combine like terms. So I can do some pretty interesting things now. I can do things like solve. So maybe what I want to do is I want to solve uh, an equation. I want to solve the equation. So this is a function called solve. And what it accepts is that it accepts an equation. So let's say I want to do th uh, 3x equals 9. I want to solve that. So I can't just do 3x equals 9 because the programming language can't parse what 3x means. It doesn't realize that that's not one symbol. So you have to do 3 times x. And you can't just do equals 9 because that's an assignment operator. You want to do what's called a Boolean equals, which means uh, set 3x equal to 9 and solve that. Now, you don't have to tell it which variable to solve for, but it's a good practice to say comma and solve, solve this equation for the value of x. So now if I press run, I'm going to get an output. It says answer equals uh, sim 3. Okay, so what that basically did now is it solved for x and said x equals 3. Now maybe if I do x 3x squared equals 9, and I run that, uh, you may actually get two possible values. In this case, it says negative square root 3 and the positive square root 3 solves this equation, right? Because square root of 3 squared is 3, and then 3 times 3 is 9. So in this case, it, it outputs actually a matrix of output. So if there's more than one output, it outputs it as a matrix. Um, another thing I can do in here is maybe I want to solve a system. Or uh, uh, here's where you might appreciate, like this equation right here has two variables in it. And all I want to do is I want to isolate uh, that equation for x. So this is a handy thing sometimes if you want to be able to graph a function and you want to solve for x. So you run this and it, it notices that it gives me, it says, oh, okay, well, x is equal to the negative square root. 3 times the square root of negative y plus 9 over 3, and it equals, or rather, or it equals the positive square root 3. So it'll solve that equation symbolically for me. Let me demonstrate this a little bit uh, with a slightly simpler equation. So what I should get now is x equals something. This is a linear function. It says x equals negative y th over 3 plus 3. And if you were to solve this for x, you should get exactly that same answer. Um, the other thing I can do in here is remove this. And I want to solve a system of equations. So I want to solve like a linear system. For example, I want three times x, three times x plus y equals five, and I want um, x plus y equals nine. Okay. Now if I try to solve this, I'm going to get an error because it doesn't recognize that what I'm trying to do is feed it two equations. It says invalid left-hand side of assignment. Uh, oops, I should have double equal sign here, double equal sign here. Sometimes it does work. Oh, it does work in this case. It says x equals negative 2, y equals 11. A better practice, though, is to create a list out of this and say, oh, you know what? I actually want you to solve this list of equations simultaneously. This is just a better practice. And then over here, I can tell it what variables to solve for. Okay, so this is what are my equations? Give it to me as a list. And then what, e what variables do I want to solve for? And this is just a good practice. It seems to work either way, whether you specify this or not, or if you use the brackets or not, but since we are using lists, it's just a standard practice to do it this way. See, we get the same output. All right, let's do a finale here. Write a function that accepts a list and produces a graph of the values in that list squared. Okay, so I'm going to define a function. I'm going to call this function square, um, or sorry, I'm going to I'm going to have it output a, ve uh, a vector. Uh, maybe I don't want it to really return anything. Maybe all I want it to do is to create a plot. So I'm not going to actually have any uh, any return value. I'm just going to say, okay, function, we're going to call this square, square plot. And uh, I'm going to feed it a vector of x values. Okay. Um, now I'm going to say, I'm going to end this and I'm just going to tab it over. And what I want it to do is, first of all, I want it to create a square of all of those values in that vector x. And then what I wanted to do is plot x versus y. And we said we want it to be in red. So I'm going to do single quote r, single quote. And then now I'm going to do uh, add some features to this plot. So what I need to do is type in this thing called hold on. And what that just means is literally hold on. I'm not done with the plot. Um, and then I'm down here. I'm going to have hold off once I'm done. So what do I want to do in here? Um, I and this, this, this spacing is just to keep things compressed. I want an x label. And I want the x label to say um, x axis, maybe just for now. And I want y label to be y axis. And then I want just title for now. I just want it to say this is the title. Okay. And now when I run this, 